back to the channel. Today we're at the Bedfordshire Steam Engine Preservation Society annual rally and it has returned back to Old Warden Park uh, near Biggleswade in Bedfordshire for the first time in six years. I think it was 2018 when the rally was last here with Covid and various other things taking place. The rally moved over to Turvey for a couple of years and now it's back at Shuttleworth and it's an absolutely magnificent setting for a steam rally. You can see Shuttleworth House behind me and also we've got the Shuttleworth Collection exhibits as well. Uh, the Heritage, Clayton and Shuttleworth Heritage team have set up um, the Traction Engine Phoenix with various uh, threshing drum, elevator, uh, tractors etc from the collection and I have the privilege of being on the collection stand as well with my heart par. So, Today is Saturday, it's a three day event. We had started yesterday on Friday um, and everything's just starting to wake up. And we're gonna take a look around, see what we can find. There looks like there to be some unusual machines here, cars and tractors and traction engines, lots of stuff to see. So let's take a walk around, see what we can find. So we're here on the Friday today and uh, it's a three day event. And Friday means that it's quite quiet because people are at work, obviously. So there's quite a few people here that uh, are either retired or exhibitors. And we'll have a quick run down the vintage and classic cars and see what's on offer. Obviously, the cars don't always turn up until Sunday unless they're local or they've been brought on trailers and camper vans and such like. But the one thing that does catch my eye is this lovely little Singer Special. Really nice. It's been barn stored by the look of it. It's not a recent conversion or special. There is a little bit of information with it. And I really quite like this actually. So let's have a look. Looks like it's been through the wars, but maybe that would live again. Something for Prescott that is, I think. That, uh, although uh, the VSCC would have to approve all of that. Yeah, what a great little car. These are all singers along here, so um, clearly there must be some kind of singer club, I would imagine. And then at the end, we've got a little Morris Minor. Another special with a boat tail by the look of it. Really cool little car as well, really nice. Run down the classic car line, Mark II Cortina, the ubiquitous Mini, Wolsey, Austin A60, I would believe, Wolsey, Wolsey, nicely turned out cars, Ford Anglia, Harry Potter fans take note, and a Hillman Minx. I remember when I was a kid, um, I was in the Boys Brigade and uh, my Boys Brigade captain had one of these. I think his was a Super Minx. And uh, he used to pick me up and take me to Boys Brigade uh, meeting on a Friday night. I'll never forget that, that was in a Minx, just like this one. Beatles, yes, we all know about Beatles. D Ridge, that's an early one. Nice, Morris, Oxford, Bullnose, Morris with a four-door touring, touring saloon body on it. It's very nice. Nice big American motor. Ford pickup. Ranchero. Don't know anything about Ford, American Ford cars. But uh, clearly we'll have a V8, because most of them did. <laughs> I know that much. Beautiful old 20s Alvis. Original condition, I would suspect. Really been looked after over its life. There's a bit of a history file around the back, so around the side, sorry. Let's have a kind of quick look, see what it tells us. It's got the original build sheet. 1927, I think that is. Not quite sure. 
very nice. Lovely patina in the uh, dashboard there. Morris 8, that's really nicely turned out, beautifully restored. An MGTF, I think, with the slanted grille. I think that would be a TF. Again, I'm not hugely sure. Same with Sovereign 4.2 straight six. Not the V12 version. Reliant Robin, how many of those engines have ended up in little special cars? Very unstable when you go around the corner too fast. Ford Prefect, possibly V8. I'm not entirely sure. There's a British Railways Reliant uh, tricycle pickup there. That's a really unusual thing to see. And then we've got a few minis. So 73, 71, 74. Beautifully turned out. Little Barclay car, little tiny engine in it, two cylinder, three cylinder, one carburetor per cylinder. That's a rather cool little thing. I quite like that. Don't think I'd ever fit in it though, me being so tall. Another vintage car, Swift. Nice uh, Cabriolet Tora body on it. Beautiful condition. Moggy Miner 1000. MGB GT chrome model, chrome bumpers before they ruined it and put the rubber bumpers on. Nice proper British sports car. Uh, a rather matte finish Morris Miner. People pay a lot of money for matte paint these days. Leave it for 50 years and it looks like that. BMW bubble car, they're getting very cool, especially Messerschmitts and the like. Um, that's a, looks like that's a four seater, which is unusual for bubble cars. That's probably quite a rare machine actually. There's a history file, we're gonna have a quick look. Pause it if you want to read more. It does look like a very rare machine, only eight imported into the UK and only built between middle of 57 until the end of 1959. And it was based on the BMW iSetter bubble car, the two-seater version. Beautifully turned out Morris Minor, 1953. MGB GT masquerading as a race car, possibly. Maybe that's a conversion, maybe it's got the real thing in it, I don't know. It was quite cool. Triumph Dolomite. I'm not sure if it's a sprint or not. That's the one to have. I don't think it is. It's a 1500 HL. Got a little bit of work needs doing on the rear arches, but uh, I guess that the guy is uh, keeping that as a running motor original condition if you like a little bit of repair uh, big Humber Humber Scepter saloon car from the 50s no early 60s it's a C-Ridge 63 1973 MGB GT and the Volvo I think this is an Amazon I remind, I think I'm correct in saying it's an Amazon. You see a lot of these on classic rallies. Because they're big, heavy cars. And uh, very capable. Bomb proof, in fact. It's a Volvo at the end of the day. Ford Populars, a lot of those found it to be slammed and put V8s in them and start using them as hot rods and dragsters and such like. Nice to see one that's uh, been unmolested. Nice little car that. There's MGB Roadster, the convertible version. And here we've got a Renault 4CV. 
Presumably that means a four cylinder constant velocity. Don't know. But what does it look like? Never seen one before, but at a first glance, it's like a tiny Morris Minor. That's a cool little car. I like that. Vauxhall Forenza. A friend of mine had one of these when we were 17, 18 years old. He used to work for Vauxhalls and he had a Forenza. Got the back, back end on it. This looks like this may have been a bit of a uh, custom job. What I do like is the moniker in the back. Life is too short to drive boring cars. Here, here to that. Little Austin 7, seen a lot of those in recent weeks, turned into specials. Clubman Estate, keep tuned on the channel because we will be starting the Clubman Estate this winter. It's gonna be a big series, there's a lot to do on it. And uh, it's going to be uh, looking like this, hopefully, in a couple of years' time. And we'll have it out. We won't have flared wheel arches on our one, though. It will be fairly standard and box stand, you know, box standard and uh, uh, as it should be. Maybe have slightly wider wheels, but that's about it. We're not having spats or nothing. So keep tuned for that one. We won't be having a um, Union Jack on the grill or on the bonnet, sorry, or anything like that. So keep tuned for the Mini Clubman Estate on our channel. Lots of work to do on that. A lot of welding, a lot of new panels. Ford Prefect, 1963. Triumph Spitfire, and this is an early one. Uh, with the early, the early bonnet on it. It's got Corvette badges on it for some reason, by the look of it. It's an H plate, so that is 1969. And the GT6 next to it, which has got a little bit more going on. Oh, no, apologies, that is still a Spitfire. I thought that had a uh, coupe boot on the back. But no, it's, uh, he's got a GT6 bonnet bulge. In fact, they both have, in fact. So I wonder if they've got conversions with a six cylinder in. We've got GT6 on those wheels. And we have similar in our garage, waiting to be um, uh, recommissioned for a friend of mine. You may see it on our uh, on our channel. What's coming up in 24? Um, we have got one of these which needs to be recommissioned. Carburetors need doing. Need a bit of suspension work. We'll be doing that in the next few months. Hopefully, another small winter project to do. V8 Rover P6. Beautiful V8 Rover engine in those. Range Rover. Um, the big Rovers. They all use the V8. Absolutely fantastic. Corvette, Stingray, that's a bit of a brute of a car. Triumph Herald convertible, I really like these, these are really lovely cars. Really cute, quite racy in an understated sort of way. We've got a Singer uh, Cabriolet, two door, that's a really nice looking car. I'm not sure what year, it doesn't give me any history on it. And then finally, we've got the venerable uh, Chevrolet Sports Coupe from 1956. That's a lovely looking car, really like that. If you're into American cars, can't go far wrong with a Corvette. Finally, on the classic car side of things for today, we've got the um, Scamp, the Mini Scamp. We've got another one of those uh, tricycle reliant vans this time. A lovely 1972 Mini. And another Clubman Estate. This one with a sunroof, and ours has got a sunroof as well, which is quite useful. And uh, yeah, this one has been souped up as well, I think, uh, custom job. And um, looks like the passenger has been sat in the passenger seat for a very, very long time. I said before on the channel I'm no motorbike expert at all I do like looking at them I can appreciate them but I know next to nothing about motorbikes but for your delectation and delight let's take a walk down the motorbike line Thank you. That's beautiful. 
You're quite right, sir. That is a beautiful bike. Triumph Twin, I know that much. Triumph Single is a lovely BSA. I do like those pre-war motorbikes, or inter-war motorbikes, I should say. Absolutely lovely. Sidecar BSA, really cool. And we've got the Vespers around here. Now Vespers, love, everybody loves a scooter. You remember the film Quadrophenia? All the mods driving uh, Vespers. And in our town, we still have on a Sunday morning a Vesper meet outside the local uh, wine bar, stroke coffee bar, stroke eatery. And they all come on a Sunday morning and they line up their Vespers for their ride out on their Sunday morning. It's great to see. Nice little club atmosphere. Some nice Royal Enfields here, I do like those. And that BSA as well, that's lovely. Another BSA there, trial bike. Really cool looking actually, really nice. There's an Indian. American bike. A very old Hudson. Lawnmowers were made over the years. Crikey, look at all this lot. Old, more old lawnmower club comes here quite regularly. And to Shuttleworth in general. Whenever there's a show on at Shuttleworth, the lawnmower club sometimes exhibit all their equipment that they collect. They had holes in the hitches. Because the old boys never had a driving license. Kids mower made of Meccano. What a fantastic little thing that is as well. Really great. We were allowed in. Of course, when a lot of these lawn mowers were made back in the early 20th century, it would have been middle to upper class because people wouldn't have had a lawn. So this would be a very expensive piece of equipment to cut grass, and you could only have one if you could afford it. I've been looking at this lawn mower for a few minutes, and I think this was a pulled by a pony. There's no engine on it, you'd never push it, it'd be too heavy and trying to cut grass at the same time would be too much. And I think that this, all along here, this would be to put a harness on for a pony and tow it around the, uh, the lawn. Or perhaps not lawn, might be a bit big for a lawn, but maybe cricket pitch or tennis court. But then again, wouldn't the hooves, wouldn't the hooves damage the grass? If anybody knows, let me know, because I'm intrigued to know. Of course, as I said earlier, a lot of lawnmowers who would be beyond the reach of many people in terms of cost, because as well, you didn't have a lawn either, so why would you need a lawnmower? But I remember my grandmother having one of these uh, little push ones with the T handle at the top. And uh, I used to use it on her little patch of lawn, two up, two down in Luton. When I used to go and visit her, I used to spend Sunday morning cutting her lawn. It took me about 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, all these things really do bring back memories. In the model tent, we've usually got um, model fairgrounds. And this year is no disappointment. Some really good uh, little models, working models and all sorts of things. Modern ones and steam fair type. This is all really good. That's a huge model of a fair organ. Absolutely fantastic. Wow, but well, that took some time to build. A replica of the actual Victory, which is still out and about working actually, I think. You should see that at Great Dorset Steam Fair. Fairground set. Circus. Days are gone now where you've got animals in circuses, that's for sure. Elephants, tigers, lions, all sorts of things, monkeys, chimpanzees, crikey. I don't think animal welfare would like it very much these days. But of course this was heyday of circus, when you had animals. I think you're allowed horses these days, but that's about it. Not quite sure on that. And this is a really lovely looking uh, stand for uh, fairground rides. I really like that actually, there's a lot of work gone into that. That looks fantastic. 
Now, Shotterworth can't boast the facilities that Weeting have in terms of timber. They've got chainsaw artists. We've got one of those here this time. And we've got uh, two, three saw benches. But of course, at Weeting, there is a dedicated wood yard, timber yard, with a lot of benches for full-size steam and small portables and all sorts. Both table saws. Oh, there's another one over there as well. So there's four saw benches in total. This one's circular saw, of course. They're just uh, collecting up all the saw dust, having sawn some logs up into planks. And this is a very interesting saw because this is not a circular saw, it's a reciprocating saw. Still does exactly the same thing. You can see the saw is actually in the log at the moment, just cutting out planks. It's about two thirds of the way through. Clearly they're just putting some coal on the engine to uh, get more steam, I would imagine. Powered by a very nice Foster portable engine. very unusual tractor here it's an air aircraft tug it's an American Clark for the RAF and um, they were bought in and the RAF used them so it's not a United States Air Force one it's a original RAF version straight six petrol engine sounds absolutely awesome if I get him to uh, drive it for us we'll have a have a listen to it but uh, the guy that owns this he does all my MOTs and uh, I can trust him with any car and he will give me sound advice and he owns this lovely little Clark tractor. A very lovely, beautifully restored 1200 David Brown. That is absolutely wonderful. Look at that, that's nicely done, isn't it? And the guy that owns that little Clark tractor, he also owns that case, which is uh, a big case LA and it is coupled to a stone crusher. Not running at the minute, so apologies for that. But nonetheless, a nice little rig. Really lovely portable flour mill here. I've not seen one of these before. Duckering Barn Corn Mill, it's called. Not in operation at the minute because the belt's off. But a really nice uh, portable engine powering it. If you want to have a read of it, take a look at that. <laughs> Duckering cornmeal, portable. What a fantastic thing. Very, very unusual exhibit. <laughs> And of course, we've got the usual thrushing uh, demonstration going on. Nothing happening right now at the moment. Um, we've seen that before, of course. This time it's coupled up to a Nuffield 460 tractor, Marshall threshing drum, stationary baler at the back there. Trailer load of uh, sheaves of corn, 
or wheat by the look of it. A bit of greenery in there as well, which is not helpful, but anyway, nonetheless. And the, the threshing drum has got a trusser on the back. So basically what that does is it um, sorts out all the straw that's coming off, that's been threshed, and it puts it into trusses to be able to make it stack easier. A bit like baling, but uh, a little bit looser. At the far side here, we've also got another Nuffield powering a um, chaff cutter. So that is cutting up straw and grass into chaff for feed for horses and cattle uh, so that they can chew it up a bit easier rather than having great long bits of grass or straw to chew on. They have uh, nice chopped up bits. Of course, we're outside the beer tent. And what does that mean? Traction engines. Two foul traction engines built in my town that I live in now. Fowls of St. Ives, Huntingdonshire. The factory, I'm afraid, is now long gone. They built on that, put some apartments on it. It wasn't actually that long ago that the, the archway into the factory was demolished. I think uh, the yard was uh, left abandoned for quite some time. But uh, yeah, now fowls, all trace of the fowl factory is completely gone pair of lovely foul engines, brothers and sister by the look of it, if you look at this serial number in the registration. I just love the sound of that. Got a real cracking selection of commercials uh, today. Go back four or five rows deep. Huge Pickford wagon there. There's a Latil timber tractor, a Citroen fire engine, a nice Series 3 Land Rover, F Ridge. Sorry, I do apologise. Series 2A. Minivan. Series 1. That's a Series 3. W Ridge 1980. Buick pickup, Chevrolet step side, left hand drive, so would be an import. V8, of course, long wheelbase series 3, V Ridge 1980. And we've got a K, would that be? I think that is also a series 2A. Let's just have a look inside, it will tell us. Yes, it definitely is. Series 2A with a dash in the middle, not in front of you. That would be one of the last Series 2, because if my Series 3 is an L plate, this is a K plate. So that would be the crossover. Series 2A, it looks like a 3 at the front because the headlights are in the wings, which is the very last incarnation of 2A. And you can see there, it's got a wire grill, of course. And as I said, the dashboard is uh, all the dials are in the middle of the dash, right in front of the driver. The Thames Trader pickup. A standard 10 pickup van. Not quite the uh, A40, the, sorry, the Austin A50 that I would like to get. My father had an A50 pickup and a van version as well. Some really nice Bedford lorries here. Flat bed and a drop side. Thornycroft Bulldog. Built in Basingstoke. Volvo F7 tractor unit. Built in Sweden. <laughs> Bedford TK. Flat bed, drop side truck. Built in uh, Dunstable, Bedfordshire, near Luton. We've got Leyland Chieftain, uh, fifth wheel tractor unit, ICI. Um, Eston Grange, would that be up Liverpool, Runcorn Way, somewhere perhaps? Not quite sure. ICI was at a big plant up, up that way. Ford D Series, uh, raker truck by the look of it. Lovely comma. 
another Thornycroft flatbed with a uh, Alice Chalmers, uh, no apologies, a case tractor on the back. Chevrolet dropside truck with a breakdown crane in the uh, on the bed, and another Bedford, a nice Ford Transit uh, motorhome. I like that. Dennis box van. That reminds me of the dad's army van, but I don't think that was a Dennis actually. Now we've got a Fordson pickup drop side two together in fact beautifully uh, restored really really nice and then finally on the end we've got a Bedford uh, flatbed TL B Reg that makes it 1980 something <laughs> I can't remember This uh, gentleman clearly takes pride in his vehicles, two of them together, beautifully decorated and turned out. Nice old Bedford drop side flatbed. Uni power timber tractor, complete with winches. Tree specialist, Framlingham. Another Bedford, different era, two together in fact. This one would be, uh, it's got a Perkins engine in it, I know that much. Uh, Scammel coupling on the back chat back at Stradset rally video you'll see how the uh, the scammel coupling works on that that's got one of these on the back of that Bedford CF van my company used to run CF vans for service vans you don't see many now that's for sure because they all rotted away like everything else panel van it's beautifully restored that's for sure there's some time gone into that because because there's a lot more tin work on a van than there is on a car very nice. I think this probably would have been um, either an AEC timber tractor or maybe military. Certainly got an AEC cab on it and it's a six-legger so it could have been a military vehicle but it's clearly got what used to be a horse box on the back made into living accommodation. That's quite a beast. Merryweather fire appliance used to see these a lot of course not anymore AEC built again and another Ford Transit camper with the uh, dormer roof on it really nice to see this was a thing to have back in the day it's even got its toilet tent at the back and fold down tables and a bench seat my goodness I right, well remember toilet tents bucket and chuck it and we used to do a boys brigade camp that's what we had to have there was no latrines as such that was the latrine toilet tent and a bucket and uh, there was a rotor I seem to remember for the boys to empty the buckets and you had to do it at least once in the week we were there. Learn how to live and join the Boys Brigade. <laughs> yeah, well, memory from that actually, thinking about it. Yeah, I remember we were doing the washing up one day and the captain used to say, he was an old guy then and he, he's long gone now, bless uh, God rest his soul. But I remember we were washing up one day and the, some of the other boys, they were sort of like just sort of dipping it in the water and that was it. And he would say, no, you've got to properly wash the forks, get the brush down inside the fork prongs, because if you don't wash it properly, you're going to end up with stomach ache. I'll never forget that. And now what do I always do when I wash up a fork, if it's not in the dishwasher? Properly brush down between the prongs of the fork to get all the food out, so it doesn't harbour any horrible, nasty stuff. Gosh, the things you remember when you... <laughs> when you look at a toilet tent <laughs> you remember all these things that used to go on how do I get from a toilet tent to washing a fork I don't know this is an absolutely beautiful scammel truck look at this look at the cranage on that wow what a what a thing wimpy big builder firm of course that is an awesome piece of kit I absolutely love that look at the cranes on it I, oh, that is great absolutely fabulous
there's an AEC um, timber tractor no crane on this one is it or is the crane no the crane is down actually so the crane on the back Bedford TK Luton bodied um, lorry seven tonner looks like it's been made into living accommodation again it's a caravan which goes behind this scammel uh, recovery truck that's a beast as well isn't it look at that wow great big crane on the back and there's another one next to it as well I suspect Gardner engine let's have a look Rolls-Royce Rolls-Royce engines six cylinder look at the size of that block those pistons on there are huge for a six cylinder that block on there is about it must be four foot long crikey anyway it's a Rolls-Royce diesel what a thing another AEC Matador timber tractor in fact there's three or four of those coming up again nicely restored and another and then we've got two at the end which are much older by the look of it with different different uh, front end nose one of them might actually be a wrecker wrecker truck uh, with the crane this one's a timber tractor definitely I think the other one is as well I don't want to intrude on the ladies privacy but uh, if you want to know what to do with your loot and bodied lorry then you can fit it out to an absolutely fantastic looking living accommodation and travel the uh, country doing rallies all summer and winter by the look of it because it looks pretty uh, well insulated and finally we've got a pair of uh, flatbeds one's a sedan 1968 and a 1967 1969 sorry and then a 1967 eight-legger bedford with a container on the back which looks like again <laughs> living accommodation for the weekend you don't often see this style of Bedford in this configuration actually not at rallies anyway you probably do at commercial events but um, this is quite a rare one to see actually it's a big lorry it's a big lorry it's got the TK um, cab on it but I don't think it's a TK because it's too big um, but yeah really nice uh, nicely turned out exhibit now it has to be said that I am a closet caravanner and I do like a caravan and there's always um, at Shotterworth over the years there's always been the, the historic caravan club and I, I'm really intrigued by these things what used to be uh, used for holidays throughout the year tow behind your saloon that you had 1950s 1960s in some case 1940s and 1930s um, it's a really nice Mark II Jack there But uh, yeah, these guys, they really go to town. They get all of the stuff that goes with it, all the interiors, beautifully turned out. They get all the chairs, they get all the equipment. Here's one here. This looks from the 1920s even, this one. Um, I honestly don't know the ages of these things. There is a history file. But they've got a wash stand here with enamel bucket and jug and pan. They've got um, wind brakes, all looking period sort of stuff. All the interior is all period. Absolutely brilliant. And here's another one pulled by a modern Land Rover Defender. <laughs> yeah, they do a really good job. They turn out nicely these uh, these uh, caravan people. There's competitions for the best caravan and stuff like that. It's modern competitions for manoeuvring the caravan, how clean it is, how uh, efficient you can be, how environmentally conscious you can be. So uh, yeah, they really do take it seriously, caravanners. So the Shuttleworth collection has got a number of vehicles out on display and um, the collection is best known for its aircraft. Um, lots of very rare aircraft that are still flying and housed at Old Warden. 
but it also has a heritage team because um, Richard Shuttleworth was part of the Clane and Shuttleworth uh, business and uh, they built a lot of uh, agricultural equipment at the turn of the century, 1900s and um, there is a, a team at Shuttleworth which look after all of that and they've got a lot of equipment out today. We'll just take a quick walk around the line to see what we can see but first of all um, you might recognize the Ferguson that's in front of us. This is actually our T T20 Perkins P3 conversion. We used it back in the summer when we were chain harrowing some grass, you might recognize it. Uh, it's here today because Isaac, my son, is a, a volunteer at Shuttleworth and uh, he's brought it and uh, is entered onto the stand. And we've got it up, coupled up with a two furrow plow, which we were hoping to use in a couple of weeks at Stockfold Mill. But unfortunately, the tractor has sprung rather a bad oil leak and it's drinking rather a lot of oil. So I don't see me getting that done before Stockfold, which is at the beginning of October. So this year, I don't think we're going to be ploughing with this tractor at all because it's just losing too much oil. It had an oil leak before, but it's got a lot worse and it's coming from somewhere else now. Front main, I think, front main's here along the engine. Anyway, she's here today. She was roaded here, didn't have to trailer it. Isaac drove it and um, it's looking rather uh, ratty in its uh, various different colour paint jobs, etc. Um, and of course it's got a lot of oil issues as you can see down there it's quite a lot of oil coming out of the engine but she's uh, running enough to bring it on the road but I don't think we're going to be using it um, much more than that moving along we've got an Alice Chalmers B also owned by one of the uh, uh, employees at Shuttleworth uh, and he keeps it here so it's looked after by the collection this uh, Ferguson 35 this is owned by the collection as well as this lovely Ferguson Model A. Most of the tractors that are owned by the collection have a connection to Shuttleworth. Here is the Hart Par, you've seen that before. And we'll get that chugging around the playpen a little bit later on. And I think you've probably seen the Hoffer as well before. We, we did a, a video back in February when we did the engineering weekend and uh, the starting process on the Hoffer. Clayton and Shuttleworth also made lots of different equipment. Um, everything you see here is all Clayton and Shuttleworth. Got the straw elevator and the threshing machine, chaff cutter, and complete with living van, we've got Phoenix, which is uh, a recent acquisition donated to the collection by David Solomon. And it's an absolutely magnificent traction engine. And uh, as we speak, there is Isaac lighting up actually Isaac's actually having a cup of tea right now because he's lit the fire and uh, he meant to be oiling the engine but they're not doing that yet I don't know why not yet oh, okay so we're waiting for some heat apparently I'd just rather turn a key and start it if it was me So everybody's sitting around drinking tea, basically everything's set up, ready to go for the day. And all the guys you see on camera now, they're all working pretty hard, keeping the Clayton and Shuttleworth heritage and the name alive. And finally, we've got a very interesting water carp, which again is uh, linked to the Clayton and Shuttleworth collection. There's close on 120 steam engines here this weekend. It's quite a big rally and uh, it's an absolutely glorious day. And uh, of course they're all lighting up right now. It's about 9.30 in the morning, um, just getting everything going. Uh, and a beautiful shot of this barrel here with uh, the house in the background. I mean, what an absolutely fantastic setting uh, really for, uh, for a steam rally. You can't really ask for more. It, uh, it's a really, really lovely place. I've got a close connection to Shuttleworth. Uh, I used to work here for a, a couple of years when I first left school. Uh, I also got married here um, and uh, also now I've got um, the connection with uh, Isaac as uh, my son as, the, uh, as, a, as a volunteer here now. So uh, we continue the 
the legacy of the association of this place and I really love coming here uh, and uh, it's, it's so great to have the the traction engine rally back here now as we move along the line you've got various different engines as we go we've got a nice barrel there with a um, being lit up next to a very decent Aveling roller then we have a Fowler engine two Fowlers together in fact really majestic uh, Burrell road locomotive with a, a lovely Aveling steam tractor behind really nice mix of engines got three really fantastic Sentinel steam lorries here absolutely lovely condition and a lot of this equipment is roaded here as well which is always good to see perhaps not so useful if you're stuck behind it maybe but nonetheless I like to see engines on the road being used for what they were intended take a walk along the line we'll um, see what's going on people are getting their engines ready it's always nice to see as I said earlier um, you know, I like to turn the key or swing a handle and not have to wait two hours for steam to get up before I can do anything but that's the joy of owning a steam engine I suppose beautiful Marshall tractor there I think that one was at Wheating but I may be wrong. Good mix of engines, as I said. Uh, rollers in with traction engines and such like. They've got a very unusual, cobbled together, modern version of a steam engine. So uh, I think that's a dumper chassis with a boiler on the back and a steam engine on the front, self-propelled. Interesting machine. You see that around a few times. Smile for the camera, Mr. Emerton. Right. How you doing? I am smiling. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> well, how's things? Things are good. Yeah. Morning. Morning. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah. Good. Hard at work cleaning again. Much as I love steam engines and traction engines and such like, they are a bit of a labour of love. I really do like this Foden breaker wagon though. Look at this, absolutely fantastic. And guess what, you only have to turn the key and the thing will start. You haven't got to wait two hours to get steam up. That is superb. This is what a traction engine looks like when you take everything off of it and you're left with a boiler and a firebox. This one's been uh, renewed and repaired. All of these rivets are heated and knocked over with a riveting gun but not a riveting gun that you would find in your own little workshop this is heavy duty equipment all these different type of rivets on this board here is what you'll be using got new studs and nuts where the cylinder block would go and the saddle for the cylinder block new firebox new stays all all been uh, added in all these are stays holding the firebox together and it looks like it's an Aveling and Porter boiler and firebox for a steamroller <coughs> it's looking very good
There's no tubes in it yet. It's completely empty. Got the tube plate at the front waiting for tubes to be fitted. Absolutely lovely. This is what a traction engine looks like underneath all the paint and the, all the uh, tin work. A pair of powering engines. Now these used to live at Gravenhurst in Bedfordshire. I remember these working uh, when I was a kid. Nine, eight, nine years old, going to a steam rally. And I remember these engines. They're local engines, Bedfordshire engines. And uh, I know the gentleman that used to own them. Lovely pair of powering engines. Occasionally you see them at work. Uh, they will be probably working at Stockfold Mill, so we'll get some work, some footage of that. Very majestic Sentinel wagon. Beautifully turned out, absolutely wonderful machine. Number of timber tractors. Motorbikes, Ford Anglia, MGB GT, and a Riley Elf, based on the Mini, of course. And a uh, lightweight Land Rover military use of course now found a lot of them of course are now in preservation in turned into off-roaders some of them are in military uniform as they would have been when they were in service very popular Land Rover unusual looking thing but exactly what it says it's a lightweight stripped down version of a standard Land Rover really nicely turned out Morris 1100 uh, Rover P four I think that would be and a series two Land Rover and would you believe we've got an A50 pickup and there's me saying you never see one at a rally only just the other day and here we've got one today my dad had one of them it was a green one hardly ever see them. Don't see many buses at rallies. Lovely big duple bodied Dennis bus. I used to work on the buses for a couple of years after I came out of college. So I really do quite like buses. I haven't done many buses on the channel yet because I don't go to many bus meets, but it's nice to see buses out because if you think about it, buses are the sort of things that people sort of overlook a little bit, buses really. They just sort of exist, don't they? But if you didn't have one, how would you get from A to B if you didn't have a car and you couldn't get on the train? So uh, it's nice to see the old buses out and about. If I ever get to a bus museum, we'll do a video on it. As we say on wheels of interest, if it's got wheels, we're interested. This is Harrington body. Don't know what the engine it's got in it. Could be Bedford, could be Leyland. But Harrington were a coach builder, very much like Duple. And the chassis would be supplied by the engine manufacturer and chassis. So, and then the chassis would be driven to the coach builders where they would put a body on it, in this case, Harrington. And there was various different designs through the years. The coach business, the coach business I worked for, they all had Plaxton bodies. Every, every, every coach we had was a Plaxton body. They were based in Ware in Hertfordshire. And they had Volvos, Bedfords, Leylands, all sorts underneath the skin, but they all look very similar because the bodies were all Plaxtons. And as I say, this is an earlier Dennis with a duple body on it. 
absolutely beautifully turned out. So one of the highlights of uh, Shotterworth is being able to have the photos taken of the engines and exhibits, cars, lorries, whatever you want to take. They've got a, uh, an area penned off for people to come and bring their engines or their vehicles to have a picture in front of the house. And it's always great to see these beautiful pictures that they, that they bring out with the house in the background. And what we have here, we've got four Clayton and Shotterworth engines here this weekend two of which are owned by the Shotterworth Collection. One is on loan to Buckinghamshire Railway Centre and that is the second one from the left, that's Dorothy. Now Dorothy used to be a roller and I think there are ambitions to return it back to a roller. It still has the rear rolls on it with um, rubber tyres on but the front rolls are missing so they haven't been able to get the roller uh, back as it was but I think they're, they're actively looking for rolls, front rolls. And then Phoenix, which is the other engine over to the far right hand side, just maneuvering into place for the uh, the big shot of Clayton and Shuttleworth engines in front of Richard Shuttleworth's mansion house. And there's an absolutely beautiful shot of four Clayton engines in front of Shuttleworth house. Dorothy, second from the left, just blowing off the safety valves. What a fantastic view. memories again red pole cattle this is what my father kept for about uh, 25 years and was instrumental in bringing back several uh, bloodlines and uh, part of the scheme to bring red pole cattle back into commercial use which is what they are now used as they, they're a dual breed red pole cows they do beef and milk and uh, they're very good for that for both of those rather than one or the other and uh, my parents were instrumental in um, bringing these cows back into use and uh, finding new bloodlines and they are very pretty if I can see one 
There you go. I very well remember when I lost my parents, uh, close together actually. We still had four head of cattle and um, they were being looked after by a friend of ours at the time. And I'll never forget that I've got a phone call from the people looking after them and said, what do you want to do with these cows that you've inherited? And I said, what cows? And they said, you've got four cows here that uh, are part of the herd. What's left? What do you want to do? I said, I do wheels, not legs. Anyway, we came to an agreement and um, we kept them for a while and then they were sold on to somebody that knows more about cows than I do. <laughs> anyway, red pole cattle. Absolutely beautiful breed. Lots of memories. That's a big military turnout this year. We'll just take a run along the line. I don't know much about military. Obviously, I know about Land Rovers. I know about Bedford lorries. Um, but of course, a lot of vehicles were used in military. They modified them for various uses. Mostly army, but there's a Royal Navy lorry there. Looks like a crane lorry with lots of straps and uh, ropes and such like. Big Bedford truck there. Series 2 Land Rover. And not only four wheels that are pulling gun carriages, but also two wheels as well. Big Foden wagon pulling a massive gun at the back. which is Willie's Jeep from the 1940s, Second World War, American. And as the old saying goes, join the army, meet Pilpil and learn how to kill them. Not that I'm a pacifist or anything, because I'm not. But uh, serves a purpose to defend the country, of course. And uh, that is the aim of the game. interesting bits of kit here because that clearly loads bombs into um, aircraft I would imagine or maybe to underwing uh, bomb carriers not seen one of those before military presence seems to get stronger at these events and there's more and more uh, military vehicles coming to steam rallies and vintage fairs of course, a lot of these vehicles are historic vehicles. Uh, they're not modern military vehicles. They are historic, so they have every right to be here. Which is good to see because uh, this is what defended our country, or helped defend our country, back in the day. Whatever your politics, whatever your thoughts about warfare and defense of the country, you can't deny that it's a necessary requirement. And bits of kit like this help to defend Britain. So uh, 
Bedfordshire Steam Engine Preservation Society is exactly what it is. It's Bedfordshire Steam Engine Preservation. Yes, they do run uh, a rally for everything, but there's no specific tractor section as such. There is uh, a lot of jumbled together tractors, David Brown's Internationals, Massey Ferguson's Internationals, um, all sorts of stuff. You get all the usual stuff that you find at pretty much any rally. But there's two very special tractors here which I'm going to draw your attention to. We'll just take a walk down the line as we go so you can see. It's a nice Farmall C there, you don't see many of those very often. That's the Farmall A but with the uh, tricycle front. Uh, a nice Alice B on steel wheels, you don't see those very often. There's a German Monktels that became part of Volvo, Bollinder Monktel. When you see Volvo BM on the side of a lorry or a coach, that's what BM stands for, Bollinder Monktel. I said it was German, sorry, Swedish of course, because Volvo is Swedish. So BM, they built tractors. This one is 1952. Uh, no doubt it'll be two stroke, I should imagine. And it plonks along, we've been hearing it run earlier on. But along here we have got two very special tractors. And just behind this beautiful Garrett miniature, we have got two Sanderson tractors. Now, Saundersons were built in Elstow, in, uh, near Bedford, in Bedfordshire, so very local tractors where they were built, and they are pretty rare these days. And we've got this one here, which has been fully restored and painted at the same time. And we've got the second one, which has been restored and painted some years ago, but I know the owner of this, a good friend of mine, known for many years, I actually went to school with him. And um, I know that this runs absolutely perfectly. He's not a paint merchant. He does not paint anything unless he has to. And he's done absolute credit to this. Absolutely fantastic tractor. There's not many of these around. They're quite rare now. Anything Saunderson, anything with Saunderson written on it from this era, uh, is very valuable and sought after. And this is a beautiful, beautiful tractor. We're going to be at Casterton next weekend. And I think that this is going to be up there as well. I'm not entirely sure, um, but we'll uh, we'll see if he gets there or not. So it's rare to see one Sanderson at a rally, even rarer to see two. So as I said, the, the tractors at this rally, they're not really grouped into any particular um, make or model. It's basically find a space, park it up, and let the general public come and have a wander around and look at uh, tractors from the 20th century basically anything up to 1970 i think we go now for vintage tractors you've got classic tractors here the 100 series of massey ferguson i think there is an anniversary for these this year and um, either this year or next year so there'll be quite a lot out and about various um, massey ferguson events will be happening Organs are all very well, but they make a lot of noise. <laughs> I don't know if YouTube are going to uh, punish me for putting that music on in the background. We'll also wait and see. There's that big International 856. We've seen that a couple of rallies this year already. Very nicely turned out Ferguson. <coughs> Petrol paraffin. And here we've got an International Junior from about 1919, that's the sort of era that these were built, just after the First World War. 816, 8 horsepower at the uh, drawbar, 16 at the flywheel. This is a 1921 version. Grey and gold Ferguson, this belongs to a friend of mine, beautifully restored. Everything he and his son do are absolutely perfect. And uh, this, uh, I would know that if you were going to buy a grey and gold Ferguson, that's the one to buy because I know exactly that that would have been stripped down to its last nut and bolt and put together absolutely meticulously. Big six cylinder Fordson conversion. Nice E27N with electric start. It's what you need on one of them because they're a pain sometimes to start up, especially when they're hot. Very beautiful X Farm WC Wallace Chalmers tricycle tractor. Really nice paintwork that. 
got just the right look to it. Relatively modern international, David Brown, Ford 3000. Massey 65, one of my favourite tractors. I remember driving one of those on the farm when I worked on the farm down behind where I lived in the summer holidays. Great tractor, I really love driving that and one day I'm going to have one. Just at the minute I've got enough to do. Nice patinaed Fortune Standard. Lovely open crank Allen Brothers engine there. Don't know if it's a runner but it's coupled to a very interesting European looking tractor. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. Super Dexter in a Nuffield, big case 900. American import, and so would the next one be 641 Workmaster Ford. Sorry about that. Does he know I'm filming? What's up with the bloke? This would have been an import, 1958, would have come in recent years. Very much doubt that it would have been an original uh, tractor in this country. And again, another import would be this Twin City tractor here. And this is a really lovely sounding tractor. If I can get a chance to hear this running, I'll get it on camera because it is fabulous. It's a big old tractor, that's for sure. A Minneapolis Mow line were the successors to Twin City. Twin City were the, the two cities, uh, Minneapolis and... I can't remember what they were. Nice early Massey. 1220, 1929. It's registered BF4089, so presumably it's an original import, I would guess. And they're polishing it as well, so it must be two pack paint. It's not it's enamel, is it? No, it's synthetic. Oh synthetic. Of course. If you go to all the trouble of painting it and spending all the money on the paint, you've got to look after it. Done a long time, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's an original import, I guess, is it? I, I don't know. Well, I can't only from new, but um, it's got a BF registration on it, though, so it's quite early, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite early. Yeah. I last saw it here 19 years ago. Last time you were here? 19 years ago. I've seen you elsewhere recently. You've been at Weeting? Yeah, Weeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can tell by the accent. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd seen it out. There's a four cylinder diesel E27N, Perkins L4 engine. Lovely little MG crawler. There's a four wheel trusty tractor. Now, the trusty um, company, they built garden tractors. And we used to actually have one, a walk behind one with two wheels and two great big handles sticking out the back that you hold on to for dear life. It had a plow on it and cultivate and all sorts, but they also made a four wheel version. And I remember my uncle had one of these sitting in a pig shed up in Norfolk many, many years ago when I was tiny. And I was a real, um, I don't know how old I was, maybe 10, maybe not even as old as that actually. And I remember it sitting in the shed in the darkness and uh, thinking that looks really interesting. I like that. Don't know what happened to it. They moved, it disappeared. And the tractor that's on the front of this uh, open crank uh, Allen Brothers engine is this uh, Landini. And Landini is Italian. Again, it's a single cylinder two stroke diesel, hot bulb version. So you heat up the uh, cylinder head just here, down at the front. And there's your heating uh, paraphernalia, propane gas torch, uh, G cramped to an axle stand and get it all nice and hot and away she goes and of course the um, the refined version is the field marshal you didn't have to heat the cylinder head but what you did do was put a uh, like a glowing cartridge into the cylinder head and you would crank it over the decompression lever and when the decompression lever sprang back you were going fast enough for it to be able to uh, ignite the fuel. The other option was to put a shotgun cartridge, quite literally, in there, and you bang that pin there, get the thing on top dead center, bang the pin, it would knock the thing over, and it would start to fire and would run. If I get a picture of that being started, I'll try and uh, put that on the video. Here we've got a Fordson Major with a Perkins in, which never happened because um, Ford had nothing to do with Perkins. 
it was Massey Ferguson, uh, but nothing nonetheless. Perkins V8, beautiful engine, big monster of an engine. But finally, we have got a little Ford and Dexter. This, uh, this weekend, one of which is this absolutely beautiful six inch uh, Burrell Road locomotive. But not only the engine itself, which sounds like an absolute uh, just joy to listen to, but the, uh, the traction wagons that are with it as well. A really great setup, absolutely fantastic. Really enjoy listening and looking at that. We'll just catch the miniatures as they're leaving the parade ring. recognize on uh, the video that you've seen elsewhere this guy coming around here now he was at Wheating back in July of course a lot of these miniatures they all do the circuit same as the full size spend a lot of their summer out at steam rallies and you see them time and again but uh, there are quite a few here this time which I haven't seen before and uh, some of these are absolutely fantastic looking models really really lovely and traction wagon there as well always nice to have period equipment to go with the, with the, with the miniature or the engine or whatever it is that you've uh, whatever it is that you've uh, brought Garrett's are always lovely, full size and miniatures. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. We've got, um, we've got three big engines wanting to come past, and they're just going to have to wait for these miniatures to come out of the parade ring. Sometimes there's a fair amount of impatience with people. It doesn't matter whether you're driving a traction engine or a tractor or on a car on the road. We're all human beings at the end of the day and want to get to somewhere, I suppose. Something you don't see very often miniature-wise is rollers. There's a lovely little Marshall roller there. Brilliant. Roller. Really very nice. Another six inch barrel. Complete with cutaway boiler to see how a boiler works. Oh, that's a lovely gear, that sounds very nice. Big six inch Marshall, similar to the one we've got. Coral compound engine, very lovely. Comes a lovely big cost at all size. Sounding very nice, single cylinder chopping away. Really beautiful. Mm. Very rare thing to see is a burrow steam wagon, prototype steam wagon. So I would suspect there isn't a full size one of those around. So someone's built a model of it. Very unusual bit of equipment. You do see a lot of the same uh, engines, generally Fosters and Burrells, quite easy to model I believe, uh, Fodens as well. So the McLaren Road locomotive that's just coming down from the ring right now is uh, this chap here is a, a very capable, very professional engineer. He's a family friend, so I can say things like that about him, and he's just finished building this beautiful four-inch parent, and it works absolutely beautifully. And I know that it would have been done properly.
Fowl engines were built in St Ives in Huntingdonshire um, when Huntingdonshire existed as a county in the UK and Huntingdonshire is on the edge of the East Anglian Fens and you notice with a fowl engine that the front wheels are set further back from the front of the, front of the engine 
and the reason for that is is because of uh, the narrow roads in the fens it was uh, made the engine easier to turn around the narrow lanes so they put the front wheels further back uh, generally the perch bracket on which the wheels sit uh, or under which the wheels sit is usually um, underneath the fire, uh, smoke box where the chimney is but uh, foul found that uh, they could get better turning circle with pulling the wheels a bit further back and keep the same sort of length boiler so you could keep the capacity of boiler up and made the, made the machine more maneuverable. There's about six or eight foul engines left in existence I believe, they're not many, they're quite rare and um, if I was to have a traction engine Isaac would have a, an Aveling 10 ton road roller, but because I live in St Ives, I would almost certainly have a foul. It's a single cylinder as well, so when it's really working hard, it does really bark in the uh, exhaust note. Absolutely glorious sound to hear it coming down the lanes. Another little fact about this engine, it's named Cromwell and of course Oliver Cromwell, a famous parliamentarian that started or was instrumental in the Civil War in 1640 something. Oliver Cromwell was born in Huntingdon, so uh, a nicely named engine for, for where it came from. Well, it's been an absolutely cracking weekend. It's great that the Bed Steam Club have come back to Shuttleworth and Old Warden Park. They've had a really good turnout. The weather's been absolutely glorious, and uh, we've had a really great time. Chugging around the, the field with the Hart Par has been really good fun. Played around with it, got it running a little bit better than it was. Um, been interacting with the Shuttleworth team as well, and uh, just sort of like enjoying being with them. Isaac uh, has been on the engine as well, which has been really great. He's gone off to university today, so he's missed Sunday. But uh, we've all had a great time this weekend and uh, absolutely loved it and can't wait to come back next year. So uh, if you uh, if you've like what you see and you want to keep up with what we do, please put a subscription down on YouTube. doesn't cost you anything. Keep up with what we do in our mechanical adventures. It'd be really great to have you on board. And if you like the video, please put a like button and uh, then uh, that all helps with the uh, the algorithm gets more people interested in seeing what we're up to we've got lots more to come uh, we've got Casterton uh, working weekend next week and in a couple of weeks time we've got Stockfold Mill working weekend as well and then we get back into winter time when we start doing projects again so I'm just waiting for a very noisy roller to come down the road he's just making lots of noise as he's driving down so I'm going to sign off now and uh, until next time, take care and bye for now.